In the first trig section, we looked at introducing radians. We looked uh, back at the sine rule and the cosine rule. We did a bit of geometry. We looked at uh, just triangles in general. Uh, a little bit of bearings, okay? And we looked at uh, arc length and sector area. So what we're going to be looking at in this second section on trig is really all about how we can solve algebraic trig equations, okay? That's what our target is. And in order to do this uh, quickly and effectively, it is important that you are able to sketch the curves of y is equal to sine x, cos x, and tan x, and sketch them quickly. You need to know their shapes, and you need to know where they cross the x-axis. Okay, So that's what we're going to be doing here. And I'm going to do it in both degrees and radians, Okay, so you can see the comparison. So let's start off with y is equal to sine x. Now, you could always uh, use your calculator to help if you're not sure. Um, but hopefully you should have met these curves at GCSE. But it may well be that you didn't. So don't worry too much. So what we're going to do, um, starting off in, doesn't matter if your calculator is in degrees or radians, just type sine of 0. Okay, and you should get zero, and that's telling you that it, the curve starts at zero, zero. So when x is zero, y is zero. Okay, now if you know what the general shape of one of these curves is, that should immediately identify which is which. So the sine curve looks like this. Now that is between 0 and 360 degrees. So there is 0, here's 360 degrees, there is halfway 180 degrees, okay? So this point here is at 270 degrees and that point is at 90 degrees. So notice the symmetry of the curve. I know my curve, my sketch, isn't uh, perfectly symmetrical but you need to understand that you're going halfway at this point between 0 and 360 and then it's halfway again there and halfway between 180 and 360 is 270. Now the height of the curve is also important. The curve only goes between minus 1 and 1. Okay, The curve does not go above those two points. So the minimum of the curve is always minus 1, the maximum is 1. Now the cosine curve, or before we go to the cosine curve, we best to put this into radians as well. So from uh, our radians knowledge, 2 pi is 360 degrees, and so we would write this as 2 pi. This would be pi. Half of pi is pi over 2, so... 90 degrees corresponds with pi over 2, and 270 degrees corresponds with 3 pi over 2. Okay? So, cosine. So, cosine is actually exactly the same curve, but it has been translated along the x-axis. Okay? So the cosine curve, if you put the cos of 0 into your calculator, you should get 1. It doesn't matter if you're in degrees or radians, you should get 1. And that tells you where you're starting, at 0, 1. And so the curve looks like this. Okay? So this final point here is at 360 degrees. This point here is at 180 degrees. This point here is at 270. That point is at 90. Okay? And in radians, these would be pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And the curve is going between, once again, minus 1 and 1. Now, all I'm sketching here is the curves between 0 and 360, or 0 to 2 pi. But in actual fact, these curves go on and on and on forever and ever, in both directions. Okay, So they're actually, they never end. And they are therefore referred to as periodic. 
okay, because they repeat themselves. And we're going to look at, a little, at that in a little bit more detail later on. But that leaves us with one curve, okay? This y is equal to tan x. How is that related to sin x and cos x? Well, in actual fact, one of the trig identities that you need to remember is that tan x is the same as sin x over cos x. Okay? This is a very important thing to remember. Tan x is sine over cos. And we can use that fact to help us sketch tan. Now, if tan x is sine x over cos x, that means that when the denominator is 0, which it can be because cos x is 0 at 90 degrees and 270, that means at those points you're dividing by 0. And so what you have at those points are what I've referred to as asymptotes. So they are vertical asymptotes. Now what I mean by that, let's write that word down, asymptote. Okay, what I mean by that uh, in the vertical sense is a line that the curve cannot cross. Um, and it is a, really, the definition of this is a line that the curve tends towards. And we're going to see how it tends towards this line. And we usually draw them in as dotted lines. So we know that there's one at 90 degrees, and we also know there's one at 270 degrees. So let's pop those values in. So that's 90 degrees. That's 270 degrees. Let's also put it in radians. So that's pi over 2, and that's 3 pi over 2. OK. So we know where the denominator is 0. How about when the numerator is 0? Because if the numerator is 0, then the whole thing is 0. And that will tell me where it's crossing the x-axis. So sine is 0 where it crosses the x-axis. So that would be at 0. So we know that the curve is 0 there. And at 180 degrees, or pi, so halfway between. And at 360. OK, so let's draw those points in. So 0, 0 degrees. Uh, we've got uh, 180 degrees. And we've got the 360. Let's put them as radians as well. So that's pi, and that's 2 pi. OK, so we're getting there. OK, we know some information about this curve. Now, um, between 0 and 90 degrees, what we can see with sine is we are above the x-axis and so positive. And between 0 and 90 degrees for cos x, we are also above the x-axis and so positive. So you, when you're between 0 and 90, you have a positive number divided by a positive. And so tan must be positive as well. So tan must be above the x-axis between 0 and 90. And because it must approach this line, okay, like a, uh, as it is an asymptote, the curve must look like this. Okay, so it is approaching that vertical line. Now you can do a similar trick to find out whether it's positive or negative um, between 90 and 180. And you should see that you've got positive over negative. So that would be negative. So the curve must be down here. So the curve must go through that point and approach the asymptote. Between 180 and 270, we have negative over negative, so that's positive. So the curve must be in the positive region then. And then between 270 and 360, we have negative divided by positive, which is negative. And so the curve would look like that. And so this is y is equal to tan x between 0 and 360 degrees, or 0 and 2 pi. Okay, You can see that the curve repeats itself after every one of those segments. So that bit is exactly the same as that bit. And it will continue repeating itself over and over and over again 
in both directions, just like sine and cosine do. Okay, So that is how we can sketch these. And the more you sketch them, the quicker this is going to become and the easier it will be to find the other solutions that you need when solving equations.